Welcome to Pockets of Joy, Season 2, Episode 1, and we're starting on a real high. I'm sharing my lifelong joy, my love of Disney, with a friend, Andrea McLeod. We nerd out on all things Disney. The music, the characters, the movies, parks, collector's items, being a Disney adult, and if you haven't yet heard of Disney bounding, you're in for a treat. Packed with lots of tips and tricks for enjoying your Disneyland holiday and so much more, dive into this pocket of joy with us and check YouTube for the video version. So I am so excited to welcome Andrea McLeod, who was AKA Andrea Keegan as I first met her. And Andrea is here as our Disney expert today for this amazingly exciting podcast episode. I have been like bubbling with excitement all morning. I'm so excited. And oh, it's so exciting. So, I love talking Disney. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. So we know each other from Performing Arts College way back in the early 2000s. Andrea is like the best dancer in the world. And then didn't you come and teach with me in my performing arts school, Centre Stage? I did. And I remember I, had just I loved had, it. <laughs> oh, I had just had my first baby. This is like 16 years ago. And Andrea yeah. came and taught for me every Monday, I think it was. So Andrea's here today to talk about Disneyland, all things Disney, the parks, give us some tips and tricks if you're going on a holiday or planning one for the, the faraway future like I am. Tell us how you got into Disney what it means to you etc so Disney for me is everything I absolutely eat sleep dream Disney like so it all started when I was really young in the 80s when uh, we had the Sunday Disney shows we'd have the gummy bears and ducktails oh, yeah. all them all them programs were on on a Sunday morning I'd sneak downstairs when nobody was up and I'd go and watch all them but I was obsessed obsessed with every Disney film that came out um my mom always had to bring me to the cinema to see them and then it just grew and grew from there and then finally I'd say when I got to fourth year in school which was nine two thousand actually uh I finally went to Disneyland in Paris with the school and I cried I walked in the gate and I cried when I seen that that castle I was like oh my god I'm at home I'm home but um and then everything just went from there I just loved it (laughs) I absolutely love that I have very similar entry into it as well as a kid I was born in 78 so growing up I did watch those programs on a Saturday morning but they weren't what really caught my interest I was more into the older films like I remember seeing Cinderella in the cinema and I must have been about five maybe it was like the when did it come out the 50s so maybe it was like the 30 year anniversary of it and it just took my breath away and the music I thought was so magical with my pocket money as a teenager I bought whatever doll was in the toy shop this is a bell I got in like 90 probably 94 um and I got a Pocahontas the year Pocahontas came out in 95 and so I just started collecting those things and I have to say I got married in a pink outfit, right? It was a corset, a satin corset and a pink uh, skirt. And Sleeping Beauty was my absolute inspo for that wedding outfit. But I did wear ruby slippers, like red sparkly high heeled shoes with bows on them because I also love the oh, wizard bows. So I had a pink <laughs> outfit for my wedding. I even had a little tiara with pink hearts. I'll try and insert a picture of it here. And these are all my animator's dolls. I only have four yet. I've got Rapunzel. I've got... Uh, Pocahontas but she's dressed as Mulan because I lost her Pocahontas dress okay I was wondering (laughs) (laughs) I've got Belle and I've got Ariel and and the first time I got to go to a Disneyland was in 95 I think it had been open only a couple of years at that stage or 96 I think it was only open yeah it would have only been opened yeah yeah I was au pairing in France near enough to Paris and the family said one day over dinner just really casually and let's go to Disneyland tomorrow just the way we might say, let's go to a park tomorrow. And I was like, what? Oh my God, seriously? And I started crying and they were like, what is this crazy girl at? I was 18, (laughs) crying at the dinner table. And we got to the park the next day and the dad who was so strict and, you know, like boring in real life, started skipping around and singing Disney songs from the minute we got into the car park. You know how they have the music as you walk through the car park? And I was like, what is this? He had like a whole personality change for the whole day. He became a happy, lovely guy. (laughs) And I spent the day just walking around in awe. It was just amazing. And I've been back every few years. Even when we had our first two children, we got there every year or two. 
But since we've had our girl, we haven't been over. So I'm dying to bring her. Yeah, she'd love it. Yeah. How and now that they're building. Going? Oh, how often do I go? Well, yeah. I go to Florida. A oh. lot. So <laughs> we've upgraded from Paris to Florida. Um, but we kind of go, we try to go about two, three times a year. Oh, wow. So is it yeah. is that the only thing you do for a holiday or do you go other places too? Because I know you don't have kids, so maybe you have more spending money than I might. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is easier that we don't have kids, but um, it is the only holiday that we do at the moment. Yeah. So literally you plan and save for each one. Yes. And do you do the same circuit every time you get to that park? Uh, no, we kind of change it up a little, but we do have a routine on our first day. So our okay. first day we arrive in Magic Kingdom, we go and get waffles, fruit waffles, and we sit and watch the show from the side of the castle. And then then we go and just hit rides then and just kind of soak in the atmosphere. Oh, <laughs> and this is a question my daughter had for you. She was too shy to come on and ask you herself. Oh. <laughs> do you have a favorite ride? And if so, do you go to that one first or do you build up to it and go to it at the end of the day? So I do have a favorite ride, which is Guardians of the Galaxy. And we do that probably the second day because we don't do Epcot till like day two or day three. And you have to book into that ride. Okay. And how is the queuing? Because the last time I went would have been 2013, I think. So okay. I know things have really changed digitally now. You've got an app. So what are the queuing times like? Because it used to be that you'd go for the full day, but you might spend an hour or more in each queue for like three or four rides. And it was like, you're trying to keep the kids entertained and it was crazy. So the queuing system now, it, you can go and stand in the normal queue. And if you want to spend the time standing in a queue, that's fine. Like, but I'm too bougie for that. <laughs> if I'm being honest, um, the fact that I am like, we just have just two adults with, whatever expenditure that we want uh we pay to go to fast track okay which can add up a lot for How families i think it's very expensive so there's two ways of doing it um i'm not a hundred percent sure on paris because i haven't done it yet but in uh disney world and disneyland in anaheim they both have what's called lightning lanes okay so you pay for an individual lightning lane on they have two they have one ride in every park that you pay anything from $15 to $25 per ride, per person. Oh my and God. And then you buy the lightning lane for the day, which will give you the certain rides that allow lightning lanes. And that could be anything from $30 to $40 per person per day. So that covers all the rides rather than paying for each one separately, is it? Yeah. But yeah. except it doesn't include them, that one ride per park. Okay, I get you. So you'll have to still pay for that separately. If you want, or you could like that get, you could stand in the queue or you can get what's called a virtual queue. So you have to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and book in for this. And then like say Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'll wake up at seven o'clock, try get my space and it'll give you a time that you'll come back in. So you could be, group 76 and you kind of work out right 76 would probably be about 12 o'clock in the afternoon ah. so you're not rushing to the park to get there yeah because your, your group will be called do they give you a window going it's between 12 and 1 and you just get there at that no time? you have to figure it out no, they just they just do the the group so they'll say call in group 1 to 10 and then 10 to 20 and then so on like okay and so with the, the right goes lane... down you have to wait oh okay <laughs> um with the lightning lanes, are you still queuing for like 20 minutes, but it's just not like an hour and a half? Um, You could be. You yeah. could, sometimes you could get on and off in like 10 minutes. Okay. But um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's kind of like a playing game. You kind of, you, you just wing it yeah. sometimes. <laughs> when I look up now, when I see, like I follow loads of Disney adults online on YouTube and I'm watching their shorts. I sent you one of them recently because I thought she was crazy. This mom who had like three or four kids, she was getting up at like something crazy, like 4.45. She was doing a workout to get her energy up for the day. She had the whole family. Now, I love the whole, let's talk about Disney bounding in a minute, but she had the whole family dressed in themed outfits. 
they got to the park first off she had her schedule for the whole day and I was like oh my god this is like something I have to study if I want to get the most out of it do you recommend loads of research before or can you just go along and wing it and hope for the best or are you going to miss out on the stuff you want to do so what I would personally recommend is do a bit of research on the rides that you really want to do and what you want to see the shows you want to see who like who you want to meet and then we wing it a lot of the time yeah the only time that we actually have anything booked is when we have to go like on say guardians of the galaxy or tron they're the the two rides that we kind of go right well we we have no choice but to kind of wait around for them yeah but other than that we kind of just wing it and hope for the best yeah now i did go with my family a few years ago and it was a lot more slower paced yeah and a lot more um planning to do we had to plan a lot more like try for what everybody wanted to do in so you kind of ask what rides do you want to do in magic kingdom today and you're like oh jungle cruise and i want to do space mountain but they're on opposite sides of the park so you have to kind of plan how to get around each yeah. one <laughs> and then what about queuing for food or getting to eat anywhere with a group because I remember, you know, bringing picnics with us. Is that allowed officially to bring in yep. your own food? Okay, that's good. Yep, you're allowed to bring your own food in if you want. A lot of people have dietary requirements and um, and they don't mind you bringing in. Just once it's not in glass. Okay. I did see somebody get their Nutella taken off them. <laughs> so oh, no. I was like, oh no, bye-bye Nutella. Oh, <laughs> but so um, the food, food in the parks is okay. We kind of just snack more than anything and then like that in florida we eat outside the park yeah we'll go to a restaurant outside doesn't it's mainly chips burgers and stuff but there yeah. are other options if you're willing to kind of look for them yeah um as for queuing for them we kind of do a mobile order so on the app you can order your food and when you're ready you'll say i'm here and then they'll have your food ready for you and you just go up to a window and collect it that's so cool. Is that the case in oh, Disneyland handy. as well in Paris or just the one in Florida? I think it's just the, the two parks in America. I don't think it's ready yet in Paris. That's very clever because I remember huge queues in really loud, busy restaurants for food with hungry children and it was just a nightmare. So I think that was the first time when we had the two boys and then the second time we went with the two boys, I was a bit more prepared and we brought in food of our own. And we just waited till the end of the day after the very end of the fireworks. We went out and we ate in Annette's Diner, which is one of our favorite places. Oh, yes. You're always starving when you get there. And it's like burger and chips and everyone's happy. Also, I want to ask you about the hotels. I've never stayed in a Disney hotel. What we did before was we got, well, once we were in an Airbnb, like an hour's drive away. So we drove in and out. Or another time we stayed in Paris City and we got the train out to the park. So what do you recommend? Have you stayed in any of the hotels? What were they like? I'd love to know because I've seen loads of videos of the decor and they're just amazing looking. So in Paris, it's the only one I've stayed on site. I stayed in the Sequoia Lodge Hotel, which is like a, an old forest lodge. Yeah. I don't, I personally don't think they're really worth the money that you, you spend on them. The only perks with Paris, say, is that your ticket is included and oh. you have early entry into the park with them um so if you could get a good deal um oh, i'd recommend it but we also stay you know the shopping center no. just down from there's a big shopping center that 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 was built purposely for disneyland paris and they have loads of hotels down there oh and good. they're much cheaper and you can actually walk from there to disney oh, but there are there's loads of shuttle buses that go up and down free Actually, I think we shopped there for food when we arrived one of the times. It's just outside the park gates, is it? Or like, yeah, it's not far at all. It's yeah. about 15 minute walk. Yeah, we did. We we parked there and bought food and then walked into the park. I remember. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's a really good resource. Good. And then know. there's apartments that we stay when we're there. Like they're the closest ones to the park. And we walk up and down all the time. And then you have your own kitchen as well in it. So Perfect. you can have your own breakfast and because breakfast in Disneyland Paris isn't great. I'd say it's, it's a croissant just... and a coffee. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> and tell me about, don't you get to sometimes have breakfast with the characters? Um, Yeah, they're paid extra. Okay. So I, I'm i not a character person. I never know what to say to them. But um, 
I kind of just wave at them and run away. <laughs> but um, the character breakfast, yeah, the, the most of the time they're paid extra, and you can do like dinner and lunch as well. Okay, lovely. Um, the Plaza in Disneyland do I think Winnie the Pooh. Oh, lovely I'll do it characters, which would be great. That'd be lovely. Yeah, my daughter actually the other day, what was it? One of the Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I mentioned Christopher Robin to her, and she's like, who? And then I pulled up a picture of all the characters of Winnie the Pooh. And I was like, do you not know any of these? She's like, no. I was like, damn, oh my God. Missed that whole area. I have to educate her. <laughs> the whole new thing. Um, come here, tell us what are your like standout moments of favorite memories of any of your Disney park visits? I'd love to know. Definitely the fireworks. So the fireworks in the Magic Kingdom in Florida are out of this world it was that bad that they changed the show a few years ago and they had to bring back the yeah. original show happily ever after because there was so much protest over it oh. and the, the show is unreal the song i walked up the aisle to oh. <laughs> it's that magical oh, I must and then the, what's it called then the, the, part of the show where tinkerbell flies out and like no matter where you stand but i actually stood right underneath her and I was showing people the videos and they were like, oh, my God, she flies. And I said, yeah, it's a real person up there. <laughs> oh, my God. And what's the song called? So we can all look it up. Happily Ever After. Happily yeah. Ever After. I will link that below. That sounds gorgeous. I love oh, the songs love that it. they write. I love the songs they write, especially for the parks. I think yes. some of them are amazing. And I'm really into the music of Disney. Like that was really what got me as a teenager was all the beautiful Alan Menken soundtracks, you know, of. The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, all of those were fantastic. Even Pocahontas, which wasn't such a well-known movie, has a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack. Oh, um, fab. The songs are really good, though, aren't they? They put so much oh, in. Oh, my God. And they've developed as well. Now, I was raging that I didn't go to Paris for the 40th anniversary. Okay. Because, um, was it the 40th? That yeah, makes me feel really old. Please say it was only no. the 30th. 30th. Maybe, it, no, it is 30th. Yeah. My mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Epcot was 40. That's what okay. it was. So for the 30th anniversary, they had, oh, the, the new song. And it's so upbeat. And I can't remember the name of it now. I'll look at it. <laughs> Find it and send me the link and I'll link it below. I will. Yeah. Because it's so catchy. You'll love it. Oh, deadly. <laughs> and did you have any other Disney kind of things at your wedding? I'm sure you did. Tell us all about it. I had, um... A Mickey and Minnie cake. And I danced to, um, my first dance was Aladdin, A Whole New World. Oh, <laughs> oh that's giving me shivers. That's gorgeous. And is your so, husband also into Disney or is he just like going along? Okay. He's secretly Disney. Yeah. Like he has no problem. He used to only go to Florida and go to Universal Studios. Okay. But then he met me and I was like, I'm not going all the way there and not doing Disney. Yeah. And then now we're both annual pass holders and, oh, wow. you know, <laughs> so, and they're all his choice. He's like, let's get the annual pass. I'll get it. Well, mom, we get the annual pass. <laughs> so yeah, so, that's why we go all the time. <laughs> that's gorgeous. Let's talk about Disney adults because some people are like, what, what is a Disney adult first for anyone who's listening? Cause it's different to just kids watching Frozen and getting into the toys and the music for a bit. Disney adults is a proper culture and it's like a club really, isn't it? Oh yeah. Like I'm not really friends with Disney adults per se, but I do, I am a Disney adult like that. I'm 40 years of age and I have Disney ears. I've lounge flies. I've Mickey mouse in my house. <laughs> I've what are lounge flies things. for anyone who doesn't know what's a lounge fly? Lounge fly. Oh. We have a lounge fly. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? Hold it up close. What's the picture on it? So this is a backpack for anyone who's just listening. Oh, it's beautiful. Is that, that's Minnie Mouse. This is the Disney Riviera Hotel. Oh. And it's all, it's made, it is kind of like an adult hotel in Disney. I've never stayed in it, but I own the bag because it's fab. But um, it has basically, it's all French and uh, we can see the design of Minnie in there it's in her French beautiful. outfit. It's all over it. And then there's different types of lounge flies. We have a few here as well. I love that one. Are just my, my other little bits and bobs. Um, I only have five, but they're very expensive. 
They for are. A little while. <laughs> I spent a couple this of months. One a, this Sorry. one was a bargain. This really? one was like forty dollars. That's really good. My God, really good. Yeah. So I've only paid full price for two. Okay. Which isn't too bad. Yeah. And then the others I've gotten for about thirty dollars each. So. That's brilliant. So lounge fly backpacks for anyone who's listening are these beautiful themed backpacks and they can be themed around one of the movies or a single character or a, a ride on one of the parks, you know, really anything. They've gotten, they've so many hundreds of designs. I spent a couple of months researching them early this year while also Disney bounding every day, which we'll get onto in a sec. And I ended up not buying any because I just couldn't decide. Plus they're so expensive and I, you know, they were all at full price and I was just like, I can't justify this. So someday I will own my own lounge fly. I'll keep an eye on the sales online. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, one day I might buy you one and drop it over to you. Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you which one really had my heart. It was a lady in the tramp one and it was beautiful because I love the, the artwork of that movie. That's actually one of my favorite Disney movies of all. I would watch that over and over and the music is beautiful. And then there was another gorgeous one, which was like a stack of books. And it was all the old books. You could read the name on the spine. It was like four books together. Oh, I've seen that one yet. That's gorgeous. Yeah, it was really lovely. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about Disney adults. What? So you're not friends with any, obviously you don't go to meetups, but I think maybe it's in America. There's like meetups and people just get together, just like a fan club of Disney, really. Isn't it? Yeah, they just go to the parks all the time. And a lot of families have issues with Disney adults thinking that we, we don't belong in the parks. <laughs> but I I believe everybody belongs in the park, no matter what age you are. And um, they dress in the ears. They have the, the clothes. They just basically like having fun. Yeah. And they eat all the Disney snacks. They buy the annual passes. We're just... We're just Disney mad. Every yeah. we know everything in Disney. <laughs> I know. And you know what? I think if you've loved Disney that long and you love the culture of Disney so much, who is to say you don't you're not welcome there? Like, you know, that's yeah, crazy. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Disney is for everyone, as you say, young and old. And I think it brings out the inner child in all of us and mm -hmm. keeps us really connected to our joy. And I think that's yeah. so important. Like this whole podcast, Pockets of Joy, is all about connecting with your joy and what gives you that fire in your belly to get you up in the morning and you know it's just it's one of the best things ever like look what it did to the the family you worked for in in France yeah. that time as yeah. soon as he went he was yeah. a different person I and that's shocked. and that's what I love to see the change like yeah and it really brings out the like your inner child yeah and, and the, like you know be Peter Pan don't grow up yeah absolutely <laughs> no way um I have no shame in saying I still love childish things or things that are meant to be for a child, but you can still love them as an adult. I don't think just yeah, at a certain age, you have to give up your, your previous loves at all. Um, for me, Disney bounding really got me through a tough patch early this year. I was really in a slump. January, February are tough months anyway. And yeah. I was really burnt out from a busy last year, really busy family Christmas and, you know, loads of, we do Christmas here, like the way you do Disney, we do Christmas, like we Christmas as oh, a verb, basically. We start Christmasing on the 1st of November. I mean, we're talking about it now <laughs> in our house. <laughs> so Christmas is epic here and it's a proper eight week festival. But I was exhausted and I was sick. We all had bugs and viruses and I was feeling really low, really energy, like my energy was at zero for a good six weeks in early, early 2024. And then I just, because I was stuck in bed, I was started re-watching loads of my favorite Disney movies. And I was like, you know, doing a bit of crafting. I was doing a bit of journaling, bit of scrapbooking with a Disney movie on the whole time, singing away, loving life. And then I was like, oh my God, I'd forgotten about Disney bounding. And for anyone who's new to this, Disney bounding is where you dress like something from Disney. It could be a character. It could be one of the rides. It could be a small feature in one of the parks. It could be anything really, couldn't it? Oh, it could be anything at all. The colours are the main yes. thing. So you yeah. kind of match the colours with, like, yours there, I'm okay, thinking... You to guess. So I'm <laughs> themed today as a certain character. Look what I've got. I have a flower in my hair. I've yeah. got... Um, I've got daisy earrings on. I've got a lilac top. I've got pink trousers. And if I was going out, I would use this bag in my hand. So what... So I was getting Rapunzel from this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. I have to show you this when you get it right. 
<laughs> Woo! <laughs> Lilac and pink and a bit of green for Pascal, her little friend, the little comedian. Oh, She's one of my favorite I love it. characters. I love the movie. And I was so excited so when good. the movie came out because not all of the new movies caught me the way Rapunzel or Tangled did. No, it's so good. It's so good. I love the, the music story. in it is unreal. Amazing music, amazing characters, everything. So I love her, love her so much. Um, so Disney Bounding got me out of this rut. I, every day I was excited to get dressed. I was going charity shopping and picking up clothes to be different characters because I didn't have a lot of colorful things. I'd gone very neutral in my wardrobe in the last few years. And I was suddenly wearing color again. I was getting excited. I had a Bud, Buzz Lightyear outfit on one day. It was like a Brilliant. purple and white uh, kind of a hoodie with a pair of lime green trousers and like purple oh. and white runners. And it was Buzz Lightyear. I think I wore red earrings and I was like, this is his button that he presses to pop out his wings. <laughs> <laughs> and it oh, I really, absolutely love it. It got me up and got me going every day. And the night before I'd be thinking, what am I going to wear tomorrow? And it was just so joyful and so simple, so innocent, so wholesome. Other people get their kicks maybe from a night out in a, you know, in a bar drinking wine. And here was I planning my Disney outfit for the next day. <laughs> Look, we all have to find happiness somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So do you Disney bound yourself? Because I know it's really big among Disney adults to go to the parks. And it's a way to, to dress as a character without wearing a costume. Because you're not allowed to wear a costume as an adult in the park. Isn't that right? No, you, you have to Disney bound, as they yeah. say. Um, no, I don't Disney bound because it's way too hot in Florida to Disney oh, yeah. bound. But fair play to the people who do because they they commit to it. Yeah. You know, um, I did see this guy and he was unreal. He had these little brown shorts on and a little shirt to match and um, what you call them, suspenders and the, the knee high socks and the little glasses. And he was Wally. Oh, Wally. He looked like Wally. He was gorgeous. From from the movie Wally. The from the movie Wally, yeah. That's so clever. <laughs> That's so and he cute. had then the white bag, the lounge fly with Eve on it. Oh, I was like, oh so my God, nice. you're so cute. <laughs> I love But it. I love like looking at them all and I'm like, oh my God, that person is like Winnie the Pooh. Like yeah. I've seen people do Winnie the Pooh, Piglet and Eeyore and they're all together as friends. It's great when you get a group of people to do it. That would be my dream to go to the park with you and some other people and we would all be characters from the one movie or something. I'd love Oh yeah. A hundred percent. It'd be great. That's so fun. <laughs> or people will team their whole family. They'll have the parents and the children all as different characters. And maybe as you say, the lounge fly bag will tie it all together somehow or add another element that they yeah. might be missing. I saw a great one where a woman dressed as Winnie the Pooh. I saw her online and she had like red trousers, a yellow top, and she had made her own fanny pack or bum bag that looked like a pot of honey and it was just brown with the kind of drips the honey. of honey and yellow and she had written honey on it or sewn it in it was really well made oh my god fab. It looked like she had bought it and it was such a cool and clever and simple idea but you got the character immediately I like when they do like different characters that you don't think of yes like that Wally or I've seen some people do Meg oh from Hercules um, yeah where they'd have like a one sleeve top on yeah and then like the shorter skirt but in the colors yeah so being the, the purple that she rendered with a big hair then beautiful and the the gladiator sandals that'd yeah. be a great <laughs> one to do and comfortable as well do you have a favorite disney character as such or do you do you have a favorite disney era like what's your so favorite? my favorite character of all time is tinkerbell oh she's small and sassy like me <laughs> <laughs> you're you're like what four foot eleven or something over 10 I'm tiny <laughs> you're tiny but you're definitely sassy and you make up for your small size with your big personality and you're, blonde. <laughs> you're very like Tinkerbell oh yeah I can relate to her a lot more yeah that's cool so I love her yeah what about you who's yours well I love I love the the look of Sleeping Beauty but I don't love her character because she's so you know typically female from the 1940s yeah. with no backbone or brains so I love Rapunzel for her sassiness and her power. I love them yeah. all for different reasons. I identify probably most with Ariel and I, I got an autism diagnosis back a year and a half ago or almost two years ago now, I think October 22. And I know a lot of autistic girls identify with Ariel. And I think it's because you grow up feeling different 
and you want to be part of the world the other world yeah. that you see you you know instinctively you're different to other people and you're trying really hard to fit in and you're kind of you were you're willing to change yourself to fit in so I I always identified with Ariel from the from the first time I saw the movie and part of your world was the song I sang and played on the piano like at all our school concerts I'd get up and that was like my party piece <laughs> so I identify with all the what loads of the characters I love uh, some of the Encanto characters. I love um, Belle for the way she sings and loves books. You know, there's bits of loads of them that I love. They're, but I suppose Sleeping Beauty would be the one, like, visually that I love best. Okay. That's... Yeah, she's, but she is you, though. You can see her in you. Aww. In looks, like, yeah. <laughs> like, that's just, I think I just latched on to the one I was most similar physically to. <laughs> In some ways, just because I've long fair hair, really. Um, what about yourself and Robbie? Are there characters that you die to like go and meet or see? I know you said you don't want to meet them as such. You're not going to pay for a meeting, but are there characters you look out for apart from Tinkerbell? Um, well, let me tell you a story about Rob's meeting of Mickey Mouse. So we had we had a fast pass. We had to use back in the the old free fast pass days, and there was three of them. There was Mickey, Goofy and Minnie. So I was like, OK, I'll do all the meeting. I'll go up and get the pictures with them and he'll he'll just stand by. So Mickey grabbed him in the meantime and pulled him into the pictures and hugged him and kind of pushed me to the side because they knew that he was nervous of this. So he had enough. He was like he played along and he was nice and friendly. And then we were leaving we weren't going to meet Goofy or Minnie because he was like oh I'm not meeting any more of this <laughs> so <laughs> your man goes are you going to meet the goof and now Rob is very pleasant very pleasant <laughs> just goes to your man no <laughs> and ran out of the room I was like I better go <laughs> so that's he doesn't know what to do with with characters that don't talk and it gets kind of a bit oh what do I say why how do I act I can they're just kind of doing pictures and yeah. he's like, I'm not good at, at this charades game. <laughs> so we kind of just leave them. Now, if we see them walking by, I'm like, oh, look, there's Mickey Mouse. I wave at them and take a picture. But yeah. we don't go up and meet them because he gets a bit, oh, what do I do? What do I say? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the videos? That's hilarious, by the way. And I can totally see. Actually, once we met Chip and Dale at... Uh, the Paris Disneyland which is the only one I've been to and uh, we had the two boys at the time and one of them took Barry's cap off his head and put it on his own head and you know our elder boy was laughing he was about five but the little boy who was two really got upset he was like oh no he's taken daddy's hat and like oh, that's all he talked about for the rest of the day how Chip had taken daddy's hat <laughs> this was like a trauma <laughs> for him we have a photo of the whole thing going on and like our son is just kind of like the lower lip is going and his eyes are filling with tears and Chip is there with Barry's hat posing for a photo. <laughs> so, yeah. Oblivious to what the child is doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love how they'll interact with adults as well. It's not just a place for kids. They really make adults feel part of the magic too. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh yeah, big time. Like the best has to be actually in Star Wars um, Galaxy's Edge. They, the stormtroopers will kidnap somebody. <laughs> kidnap. <laughs> or arrest them and they bring them off somewhere so it's mainly adults that get taken yeah and they're all part of the act that's going on you know they're looking for the the other side you know the good guys yeah. to oh, that's brilliant they're like you know you know who where they are show me bring bring them to me and you're like you just kind of get caught up with that <laughs> I love that and I've seen videos where like during the parades like Cruella de Vil or one of the evil queens will come out to the audience and be like giving out to them but it's obviously all pretend but like they really they stay in character they interact so well it's flawless the way they portray their characters isn't it oh unreal yeah now, there's this guy actually that pops up on my Instagram all the time who goes to Disneyland he's he's uh, autistic I so he, he's non-verbal yeah and he loves uh the wicked stepmother or the evil queen that's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. And she stays in character, but she's so good with him. And she knows his name. And she does, I was like, oh my God, I'm in awe of her. Like, she's unreal. 
Yeah. And it's like the highlight of his day. You can see he's really excited. He's stimming a yeah. lot. He doesn't even look at her or make eye contact, but he's just delighted to be in her presence. And she's brilliant. Yeah. With him. She really takes <laughs> her time with him. I love that. It's those little moments that I think make it like you might say, OK, it's very expensive. It's very commercial. It's a whole big conglomerate and it's a big business. But I think it's the day to day magic and the, the way it touches you that makes it worth all the effort and all the money when you're there. You forget about what you paid to get in, don't you? Oh, my God. Like, if I told you what I've spent on Disney over the years, I actually don't even want to add it up. Yeah. <laughs> but what I've spent on on the parks um, would probably disgust a lot of people. But at the end of the day, it's my holiday and I'm happy. Yeah. And that's the way you have to see it. Like, it's, it's what makes me happy. Like, even if I go into the park and not do one ride, just soak in the atmosphere, which I have done many times, just walked in and, you know, had a, an ice cream and kind of just floated around and sat in, you know, the hub in, on, um, in front of the castle. Yes. Yeah, just sitting there watching everybody and the families having a great time and the kids all dressed up in their little princess outfits. I'm like, I just love it. I just love watching everybody and having a great time. It's gorgeous. It really is. I think it's just, they can be the highlight of your year and other people might spend money on, you know, shopping for clothes or technology. And if that's how yeah. you get your joy, that's no one's to criticize that at all. Um, no, what, about not at all. <laughs> what about favorite movies? I don't think I've asked you what's your favorite movie if you have one. Favorite movies. Okay, so I probably have a few. <laughs> it's really hard to narrow them down because they're they're all so different and yeah. they touch in different ways. Well, tell us all of them. So I've always loved Beauty and the Beast. I love the whole idea of, you know, she, you know, she loved him for who he was. Yeah. And not anything else. And then I love Rapun I love uh, Tangled. Mm -hmm. Music in that is just unreal. Yeah. Mandy Moore did such a great job. She's as, as Rapunzel. And then up. Oh, I love yeah. up. No, it's very sad at the beginning. Yeah. But uh, I call Rob Carl. <laughs> 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 and he's like, what? And I was like, going, yeah, you're gonna be Carl. <laughs> and then I do love Encanto. Now it took me a while to get around to it, but the music in Encanto like is unreal. Yeah, we had that it's on repeat so on our car journeys two summers ago. We literally listened to nothing else. And yeah. I loved it. But the animation less so, but I think the music for me is... The music in it, yeah. Yeah. Mainly from like the late 80s, early 90s were, were my my movies. Oh, I yeah. loved Cinderella. I loved, yeah. I love any story at Cinderella, though, in fairness. Yeah. Whether it be the, the one with Brandy in it and then the new one that was made... Oh God, that was probably about 10 years ago that was made. Yeah, that was gorgeous. <laughs> new, but the costumes in that were unreal. What about Enchanted? Let's talk about the actual live action movie. Oh my God, I forgot about Enchanted. I love it. I, <laughs> I love Enchanted. It. I love it. I love, what's her name? The main woman in it? Um, Who plays Giselle. her? Amy Adams. Yes. She is fantastic. I was I in New York just after that had been filmed. Obviously, it come out, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is where they did the dance, and this is where they did." It. <laughs> That's so cool. So yeah, good. I've only been in New York at winter when it's been snowy, but I love seeing Central Park because we were there in the snow. But I love seeing it in that movie, um, and I love the songs from that movie. I just think it's such a classic. Yeah. What did you think of Disenchanted? It was good, but I think I related more to it because it was filmed here. Yeah. Me too. And I went to see it. Did you go see the set? Yes, we did. Yeah, that was amazing. I actually just felt like I was in Disneyland again. <laughs> it was gorgeous to walk around. Although the day we were there, this was in Enniskerry in, in Wicklow for anyone listening. So the movie Disenchanted is a sequel to Enchanted. And they filmed it, was it two summers ago or three summers ago now? Two or three, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was three. The day we were there, they had brought out all the big spiky vines that were used, you know, when the movie got really dark and scary. Okay. So they were lying around everywhere. So it had a, a menacing feel to it. But the still the shop fronts that they built and the flowers everywhere was just amazing. Oh, I loved it. I was like, can yeah. I bring all this home with me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was gorgeous. I asked about that. I don't know who it was. I knew a few people who were actually in the movie. I don't know if you know the dancer Carl Maguire. I do know Carl, yeah. <laughs> so he was in it, obviously. He was brilliant and he's really visible in a lot of the dance scenes. 
Um, and there was another uh, couple of performers that we knew who were in it as well. But I remember asking one of them, did they get to take any of the sets home with them or keep any little mementos? And they said, no, everything had to be packed up and sent back to Disney. Like they literally weighed all the fake flowers coming back to make sure they had everything that was sent over. Oh my God. So, yeah, there were no little, no little freebies for people. I think you <laughs> like, yoink. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to yeah that was fab um yeah I just love it all and I love how they keep bringing out films that are still really good I like I think they hit a few high points I think the 1950s was a high point I think the 90s was a high point yeah but I still think they're getting classics out today like Enchanted like Tangled although Tangled is probably 15 years ago now but <laughs> You know, I think there's they haven't sold out, even though CGI has come in and you could say everything is automated and auto tuned. But I still think they go for the best talent and it really shows. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like the teaming with Pixar is actually a really good idea for them as well. Yes. Because it brings in a different aspect of of animation. Yeah. Like so Toy Story took off. Yeah. And Amazing. I absolutely love Toy Story. I love it. And that's one thing. That's a franchise where each one that came out was as good as the one before. In fact, yeah. I think number two is the best of all. I love number two. You love number two, do you, Jesse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that bit kills me. We had to fast forward that for our toddler, Charlie, when he used to watch it literally every day. It was his favorite movie for a long time. He was always acting like Buzz Lightyear. But we had to skip Jesse's song because it was a killer, <laughs> even for him. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is your favorite of the four of them? The first one. Oh, really? I love the first one. Ah, I don't. So tell me why you love it, because you probably make me love it. I think it's just the beginning of it, like the whole thing where you're introduced to all the characters. Yeah. And like my favorite line is Mr. Potato, Mr. Potato Head comes back in from being in the sister's room and he's like, age two and up, two and up. I'm not babysitting Princess Drool. So I'm like going, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah, because everything's introduced and Buzz is amazing in that. He doesn't know he's a toy and he's like <laughs> yeah. on this strange planet. <laughs> yeah. And do you find that you're going around your days quoting from different Disney movies? Because I only said the other day it was the right context, but I remember going, you're a sad, strange little man <laughs> and you have my baby. <laughs> that popped into Sorry. my head. It was relevant. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. Do you find you have that going around in your head too? Um, yeah, Rob and I would actually quote a lot of things to each other, like like that, the age two and up thing, I'd be I'd say that to him. Come on, I'm not babysitting Princess earlier. <laughs> I love it. What other things have you got in your house that are Disney themed? I see you've got two beautiful bedside lamps there with Mickey Mouse head shapes. Is it a cage oh, of yeah, metal they're... with the light? <laughs> they were a penny's by. They're gorgeous. They're um they're just like little bedside lamps so there's no light on them as in like you can't use them in a dark room to read yeah. a book or anything they're just just for decoration they're gorgeous i have a winnie the pooh kitchen roll holder oh lovely that i absolutely love um pictures all over the house and like just random things <laughs> no i pick stuff up wherever i see it like if it's a charity shop or in pennies or wherever i'm going I'll, if I see something I love, I'll grab it. And even today, I wanted to collect a few things from around the house to show you. And I like that mirror there. I That was probably, you know, it's probably 25 years old now. I think I bought it in 2000 when me and Barry started dating. We used to do card boot sales, like sell at them. And I would buy as much as I would sell and come home with a car full of stuff. And I remember <laughs> buying that. But it's so part of my house decor now. I don't even know that it's Disney. It is who you are, you know. It is. <laughs> Do you buy souvenirs every time? Have you got a certain type of thing that you collect? Like maybe the ears or a magnet or something? I collect the ears. I have a whole bag full of ears. Um, <laughs> and I try to get Christmas decoration. Oh, lovely. It's subtle. It's mm -hmm. not like, it's just more because my tree is blue and silver and I won't let any other colours go on it. So it has to be match with them. My sister-in-law used to come back every year with a couple of mugs, like giant mugs. With... Oh, I collect mugs as well. Oh, gorgeous. My mug, my press is full. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're a great souvenir because you can use them every day and they're not in your face. They're not clutter. They're useful as well. Yeah. And Disney mugs are the best ones to drink your tea from. Yeah. 
because they're huge. They could hold like yeah. a pint or more. What about times of year? Do you have a favorite time of year in the parks where they're decorated a certain way? And I'll tell you, I remember going the first of November one year and it was Christmas and we had just had Halloween and we were like exhausted from the trick or treating and we jumped on the ferry and we got to Disneyland. Actually, it was probably the second of November we got into the park. And I remember being shocked that it was Christmas because it was still Halloween in my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in the parks, I love Christmas, um, especially in Paris. Yeah, Christmas in Paris is because it's cold. Yeah, it feels like Christmas. I've done Christmas in Florida. No, not over the Christmas, but I've done Christmas time. Yeah, it's still warm, so it's kind of weird. And they have this thing called snow. It's fake snow that they they you oh, know yeah. fall on you for pictures. So you're in shorts. Yeah. And the snope has fallen on you. <laughs> and it's soap bubbles, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do like going to the parks. Probably I like January because it's quiet and September is quiet as well. Yeah. That's good to know. Quiet or part times of the day. Yeah. Or the year to go. Yeah. I've gone mostly in spring or like I say, like November. September, October, November, autumn, I'd say, and spring. I would, I'd never want to go during the summertime. I think it would be too hot, too many people. Wouldn't be everybody's mind. cranky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that ruins a day. What about any little hidden secrets in the parks? Have you ever got a glimpse backstage or seen a character drop their character for a second? Has anything kind of shown you a chink in the the magic? In the chin? Do you know what? No, I haven't. No, I have met a cast member now who was a little bit rude. But oh. I say he was having an off day. <laughs> okay. Was he in he character? He was frustrated was... with... Say again? Was he playing a character? Was he like serving food or what? No, he was actually at the entrance. We okay. were trying to scan in. And the family in front of us had an issue with their ticket and stepped to one side. And we, I had stepped forward. But he put his hand right in my face and was like, Stop. And I and kept his hand there. And I was like looking at Rob going, do I just walk away or do I say something or just let it go? And he's like, just let it go, let it go. Because I was like, no, that was rude. Like you don't just put your hand in someone's face to say stop. Yeah. And it kind of put me in a bad mood then for a little while. Yeah. But, um, That was the only kind of time that I've ever had somebody, a cast member, like act like that. Yeah. But um, I am dying to do the... The, there's a, a tour in Florida called Keys to the Kingdom and they bring you down into the Utilidors <gasps> and all backstage. So you are going to see characters with no heads on. and So I'm dying to do that. Hopefully I'll get to do it this year. That'd be amazing. I just watched a program on it on Disney Plus and it was all about those Utilidors, which are, for anyone who doesn't know, they're like hidden corridors underground in the parks where they bring things from one part to another without you seeing so they can cross crisscross it's a whole it's a whole maze under underground isn't it yeah that's it's so like a whole city so it's like a different level so say the magic kingdom is on level two and they're on level one yeah and everything happens under there like the foods the bins the characters yeah. move from one part to the other without you knowing um Oh, I just love to know the insides of that. <laughs> do you not think it would ruin it in a way? Because sometimes, like, I often watch the behind the scenes of the movies, like Mandy Moore recording her songs. I watch loads of those kind of YouTube videos just to learn more about each film. But I've, I've tried to show my daughter some of them, and she's like, no, don't ruin the magic. Do you think it would ruin the uh -huh. magic for you then? Um, No, I think I'll have a better understanding of how it all works. Yeah, my mind sometimes gets curious, and I'm like, I wonder how that works, and I wonder how this goes. <laughs> yeah, I'd be the same too, actually. I think I'd jump back into the whole believing it when I was up above ground again. Yeah, yeah, oh, 100 percent. You're like, oh, that's how it goes. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing a one of those behind the scenes programs about their security in the parks, and the level of security they have is fantastic. Like. Yeah they have got this control room on Main Street and you just it's just one of the upper floors of one of the shops that you'd go in and out of or one of the restaurants, but they've got cameras everywhere. They've got loads of screens and apparently there's a certain time of day, I think it's in the evening when the sun goes down, that if you look up, 
at, from the right place you can see all their screens around inside the room where they're oh, watching okay. the security <laughs> cameras yeah <laughs> so like everyone's I'm standing watching the there now all night <laughs> yeah everyone's watching the parade or the fireworks and they're looking the other direction or something and they've really thought about how people move through the park so that they can have everything happening just around you and behind you and you don't actually notice any of these security features but that's why the yeah. parks are so safe to be in oh you're getting nothing in there yeah like you're screened going in and which makes you feel so safe going in yeah and same with your hotels they don't let you into the hotels until you're screened and which is amazing because you know the world is crazy as it is yeah to be honest with everything that's happening in america it would put me off wanting to go with the children just because you never know and being in a big public place is not so safe um but it's really good to know that that they have such tight security there and i know even in the disney hotels they come in and check your room every single day whether you want it or not and it's different to the housekeeping they just do a security check to check everything is okay to do a wellness check which is great and it happens in every single hotel in America. Oh, really? Not just Disney? Every, not just Disney. Every hotel. Because I don't stay on site in uh, in Florida. Okay. Because it's too expensive. Yeah. That's it's, mad money. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. And you've already <laughs> flown over there. You're not going to want to spend more on the accommodation. No. Yeah. Oh, I've got a few questions that I finish with. The final few questions. Go for was it. there a book or movie that made a big impression on you growing up? So it could be Disney or it could be something else. Um, It probably wasn't a book because I wasn't a reader. So definitely probably a film. Probably Beauty and the Beast because the music in that is just so good. Yeah, <laughs> it's stunning. It's one of my favourites as well. Gorgeous. Okay, what is your favourite meal? Like in general, could be a Disney in general. or could be anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm a chicken nuggets and chips girl. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> I've got a Very few classy. of them here as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm a pizza girl. Pizza and crisps. Oh, I love them too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pizza and tortilla chips would be my top things to eat. Um, What about, do you have a motto for life? Um, Just do it. Just do it. You like nothing to lose. <laughs> I love so that. So if anybody asks me anything, I'm like, just do it. Go for it. If it makes you happy, do it. Yeah. I think we overthink things too much and we complicate things, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Like people always analyze the money side of things and you're like, money can be made. Just do it. Just yeah. buy it. <laughs> yeah. Just Disney bound. Anyone who's listening who's tempted to dress. Yes, yeah, do it. Color. <laughs> it. It can just be a color palette. Like today, I have track, pink tracksuit bottoms on and a purple kind of short sweatshirt. And that's me as Rapunzel. And nobody would yeah. know unless I told them, you know, just do it. Exactly. Do it for yourself. You're it'll happy. Be, yeah, it'll cheer you <laughs> up on a, on a bad day. Um, and what's your finally, what's your idea of perfect happiness? Perfect happiness. Being in the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> no word of a lie when I'm there I'm just like all right this is my happy place I'm made to be here <laughs> would you ever move into one of those Disney retirement villages that I've seen oh I'd love to yeah I'd love to be so close to the park yeah like if I ever won the Euro Millions I'm buying a house in Disney <laughs> I'll come and visit every every absolutely week. I'll be there for a week <laughs> I love that your room will be ready. Yeah, thank you. I want it Sleeping Beauty themed, please, with a four post. And pizza ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this has been an absolute joy. I could go on and on all day, but we're going to have to wrap it up. But no, it's been great. I've had a great day. <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your joy and your passion with us. And I'm sure this is going to inspire loads of people who've been listening and thinking, oh, I'm too old for that, or that's just for kids. I hope it inspires people to reconnect with what makes them happy and excited absolutely you do you <laughs> thank you so much thank you for bringing no, thank you thank you so much for joining us guys i really appreciate the support if you haven't caught up with all the previous episodes go and check back through season one there's something for everybody there don't forget to give this podcast a rating and if you want to follow andrea she is on instagram i'll link in the show notes below see you for episode two next week